powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. Janelle is off this evening. Another likely delay for the long delayed Keystone XL pipeline. A Montana federal judge rules that the pipeline's new approved route in the state of Nebraska will require a full environmental review. That ruling this week comes just two weeks after the U.S. State Department said that TransCanada's alternate route had been found to be environmentally sound. U.S. District Court Judge Brian Morris in Great Falls, though, ruling in favor of the Indigenous Environmental Network, one of many groups challenging the pipeline project. Morris found that the route reviewed in the submitted environmental impact statement is in fact different from the new route in Nebraska that was approved earlier. Morris goes on to say the mainline alternate route crosses five different counties, different bodies of water, and is longer than what was originally proposed. The judge says the state of Nebraska has an obligation to analyze new information relevant to the environmental impacts of its decision. TransCanada and the state of Nebraska have yet to respond to the judge's ruling, except to say they're reviewing the decision. Montana Senator Steve Daines and Wyoming Senator John Barrasso say using the Clean Water Act as a means to delay important projects is not what Congress had in mind when that law was passed. At a hearing before the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee today, Daines and Barrasso took issue with the state of Washington's denial of a water quality permit for the proposed Millennium Bulk Terminal. That proposed terminal in the state of Washington would handle western coal and route to markets in Asia. During today's testimony, Daines and C.J. Stewart from Montana's Crow Nation implored the committee to change the law and put a stop to using it to obstruct interstate commerce. On the Crow Reservation, the unemployment rate there is around 70 percent. Uh, when you engage with the people of the Crow Nation, they are pleading with us here in Washington to allow them to develop their natural resources and to provide opportunities and jobs for their people. Imagine having a trillion dollars in mineral wealth under your feet and yet your people are starving and destitute before you. It's a cruel nightmare that would be avoided if not for the Clean Water Act being weaponized against the Crow tribal resource economy and the Crow people and culture. Chairman John Barrasso of Wyoming contends that Washington State's denial of the bulk terminal permit is an abuse of the Clean Water Act. The bill now in question would put in place specific guardrails to prevent any state from using its authority to stop a project for political reasons. In Montana's top two electoral races this year for U.S. Senate and U.S. House, those campaign ads are coming in fast and furious. This week, our chief political reporter Mike Dennison evaluates two recent TV ads from the incumbents in each of those races. First tonight, a look at an ad from Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester. I have cancer. It's hard enough without worrying about how to pay for health care. This ad from the Tester campaign features freelance writer and photographer Paula McGarvey of Butte, who has fought breast cancer for a decade. It criticizes the health care record of Tester's Republican opponent, Matt Rosendale, who's the current state insurance commissioner. Here's more. Matt Rosendale pushed to let insurance companies deny coverage for pre-existing conditions. This claim is based on Rosendale's calls to repeal the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, which forbids insurance companies from denying coverage, and for his support of more short-term plans, which can exempt coverage of pre-existing health conditions. Rosendale says even though he wants to repeal Obamacare, he would fight for reforms that protect Montanans with pre-existing conditions. The ad also says Rosendale rubber-stamped a 23% increase in health insurance premiums. Not really. As Insurance Commissioner, Rosendale can review proposed rates for individual health policies and say they're not justified. But the companies can file whatever rates they want. Last year, Rosendale held hearings and reviewed Blue Cross of Montana's proposed 23% average increase for individual policies. He did not officially object to the proposed rates and they went into effect. The Rosendale campaign says the ad doesn't mention Tester's 2010 vote for Obamacare, which Rosendale says has broken our health care system and led to a 133% increase in individual policies over four years in Montana. Those individual policies serve about 5 to 7% of Montanans. Most of these policies did see substantial increases in premiums from 2013 to 2017, but 85% of Montanans who bought them also got federal subsidies to offset the costs. This ad does take a few liberties, but it highlights a key issue in this campaign. 
the candidates' very different stands on health care policy. We'll be looking at that more closely in the weeks to come. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And coming up tomorrow night, Mike will drill down on the first TV campaign ad from Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte. Well, less than 24 hours after a huge portion of the Billings Rim Rocks came tumbling down into the yard of a West End home, tonight we're taking a look at who's responsible. Now, the homeowner told Q2 News last night that fortunately no one inside the home was injured, but now new questions over what happens next. Q2 Samantha Harrelson now standing by with more. The home now sits here damaged, and now the question seems to be who might be responsible, if anyone. Precedent has been set in similar situations where rocks have fallen on homes below the rims that the homeowner and their insurance company would be responsible for any of the damages to the property. But here the question seems to be over who's responsible for this section of the rims. I spoke with the city engineering department who said since a county park sits atop this section, they're not responsible. Multiple calls to different county officials do not provide any more clarity on the situation. At this point, we're unsure if anybody has been out to assess the security of this portion of the rims. Thank you very much, Samantha. Now, companies do insure homes located under the rim rocks, but for one local company, a special policy needs to be added to a normal homeowner's policy. An agent for Payne West Insurance tells us an endorsement from coverage from another company is added that will add uh, possible covers possible land movement. It's pretty similar to what would be used with flood and earthquake insurance. The special policy covers land movement, earth movement, and landslides. It's just a natural peril that would, it could happen. Uh, earth movement, it happens, so uh, it's something that you just have to make sure you have coverage for. It's typically under most homeowner policies, no coverage for this type of coverage. It's land movement, earth movement, it's called a landslide. It's kind of the typical words for it, um, but they want to make sure that form is covered, that it's covered under the homeowner's policy. Troy Stowe suggests having an agent go over the specifics of your homeowner policy just to ensure that there is coverage, if necessary, for a land movement. On to the weather scene now. Bob McGuire here with an update for us on our drought situation. Just let me guess, Bob, it's not pretty, huh? It's getting worse, that's for sure. We were looking at all the smoke. Let me start off with the smoke plumes, and you can see we got a lot of smoke across the western half of the country. And then, not only that, the fires are so big that they're going all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. So that got us wondering, well, how is the drought doing? And as you remember, back on June 21st, first day of summer, we had a big fire in Durango, Colorado. They had extreme, extreme and exceptional drought in that part of the world. Well, Montana, we actually had a little dry conditions up in the northwest corner of the state and also around the Glasgow area. So here's what happened as the rest of the summer went on. The drought in Colorado continued to expand and the dryness in western Montana continued to expand as well. Hasn't made it to the Billings area yet, but you'll notice we do have moderate to severe drought around Kalispell and Glasgow. We'll have the rest of your weekend forecast coming up in a few more minutes, Jay. All right, thanks, Bob. No doubt you've heard by now, the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, died this morning in Detroit. One of the world's most recognizable and soulful singers was suffering from pancreatic cancer. She was 76. Jerika Duncan now takes a look back at her remarkable life. You're no good. Break her. She sang and lived with soul and style. You better think, think, think about what trying to do to me. The daughter of a Baptist preacher, young Aretha got her start in the church choir. She became a single mother in her teens, but she never stopped pursuing her dream. By the 1960s, she was known as the Queen of Soul. Her biggest hit, Respect, became an anthem of the civil rights and women's movements. Franklin won two Grammys for the song and an honorary award from Martin Luther King Jr. A string of hits followed in the 60s and 70s. Franklin recorded more than 40 top 40 singles. and collected 18 Grammy Awards for her signature mix of gospel, blues, rock, and pop. Just hopefully, I touch someone in a positive way. In 1987, she became the first female artist inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But she faced a lot of heartache in her personal life. Her father was shot during a robbery and later died. Her two marriages ended in divorce. But she raised four sons, and she remained an exuberant presence on stage. I got me a man named Doctor. Oh, 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 feel good. 
In later years, the honors rolled in, a Presidential Medal of Freedom and a featured role at President Obama's inauguration. She stole the spotlight at the 2014 premiere for the movie Selma. But in 2017, she appeared frail, singing for Elton John's AIDS Foundation. At that point, she had already announced it would be her final year performing in concert. As word spread that she was gravely ill, Aretha's friends and fans called to say a little prayer for the Queen of Soul. Jerika Duncan, CBS News. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, a new initiative here in the state of Montana, helping people combat prescription abuse, will explain. Plus, if you like playing in sandboxes as a kid, well, the transformation of the Metro Park grandstands is a dream come true. And in sports tonight, Scott will show us who shines at the opening night of the Yellowstone River Roundup. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.